<laughs> hey guys, welcome back to your favorite podcasters, Korea, Ria, if you love me, and I have my girl, uh, V. Uh, what's up, V? Tell the people who you are, what you do, like all that good stuff. Yes, man. First and foremost, thank you so much for having me, y'all. We're friends in real life, okay? <laughs> so um, I'm super excited to be yeah. here. Um, I'm super thrilled that you asked me to be a part of your podcast, man. Praises to you because you have so many great things that's going on. Um, so guys, my name is Veron Clark. They call me V. I am a social impactor. People, there's so many people that like be in my inbox like, what do you do? What do you do? Right. Listen, I impact people, situations, communities, missions, um, organizations to really just make them bigger, better, bolder, um, to really channel in on their, their, their overall mission, right? Mm. So um, at heart, I'm a social impactor. Um, by trade, I am an organizer um, and, and just passion. I just love people, right? So, yeah. Okay, so first question, what do you feel like has been the biggest contributor to your success? Because even when we talk about success, right, tell the people exactly like where you are right now, even give them some receipts so they know a little bit why I'm talking about success, you know, just let them know, let them know. All right, well, <laughs> first of all, I am nowhere near where I want to be, right? Okay. Nowhere near where I want to be. However, um, I've been blessed with some amazing opportunities to work with the NBA to NFL to um, a, a company called Legends, which is a sports and entertainment management company. Um, so we focus on the intellectual property behind the major brands that you see, such as like the um, the Live Nations to the Cowboys to the you kind of name it within that sports industry, tourism industry. Okay. Um, we tackled it had the privilege of, of really being very entrepreneurial in corporate, right? So mm -hmm. I consider myself as an entrepreneurial. So okay. when someone comes into, I'm basically an individual that comes into an establishment that's already, you know, that's built, but right. then I build in different strategies and tactics to ensure that we're growing that in a, in a creative, um, in an innovative way, right? Mm -hmm. Um, so currently, I work with uh, uh, Mississippi State. I'm sorry, whoa, that not Mississippi <laughs> State. Ole Miss oh, University. Ole Miss. Ole Miss. <laughs> Bear with me, y'all. I've been there for three months. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I work athletics department. It was a cool, cool opportunity. I'm telling you, man. The the oh, the the power of relationships mm. has truly been. Um, something that you you can't you can't make this shit up i'm not can we cuss go ahead okay. <laughs> we can't make this stuff up right um so the pandemic hit well it was on let me backtrack on a major major uh project in dc build out an observation deck from the observation deck um our business model was um ticket sales right so when the pandemic hit of course we couldn't have enough we couldn't have individuals come to that site um, therefore, the project, it, it literally plundered. Um, my GM at the time of that particular project, he said, yo, I know you're super passionate about the community. You're super passionate about getting in involved with partnerships and things of that nature, because a lot of that stuff I did with him. Okay. And he literally was like, hey, I'm, my background is in college athletics. If you're interested, there's an opportunity to go to Ole Miss. Just let me know. We'll make it. We'll make it happen. Wow. And before you know it, literally, I I interviewed probably on a Tuesday. That next Monday, I was packing my stuff up to leave. And in two weeks, I was in Mississippi, wow. which is which is crazy enough because I never thought in a million years I would be in Mississippi. But the opportunity was literally one of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, they were building out a department called social responsibility and engagement. They had literally no, they didn't know exactly where they were going. Yeah. They didn't know what they wanted to do. Um, they, they needed someone that was literally like just a, someone on the grounds that, that would just work, that could help them with the branding aspect as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I came in in October, October one was my first day by October 15th, we had a, a, a strategic plan 
on just the the brand, what it looked like, what did our department look like? Um, and I, I came in and utilized my skills from corporate America to just drive home what what we what we wanted to see. So I, you know, I literally I asked my my um, director, I'm like, hey, what's the what's your vision? And right. that's another thing, guys. Um, yes, you can be good at what you do, but if you don't. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud product of you make the person who is above you look good mm. by all means they'll take care of you Got so it. you know my very first mission was to ensure well what's your vision ma'am what's what's your your vision and uh as she was telling me the things that she wanted to incorporate I said boom okay let, let me get out my way at this point right how do you right. tell me what you right. want <laughs> get out of my way so I can so I can execute and um, it's been a, it's been fantastic road. It, it's been crazy. Literally four months. We've done several different projects, um, co adopted communities, fed children, um, fed families, mm -hmm. um, working on a major, major project that I can't speak of now, but, um, by all means, it's, it's been, it's been really, really good. Oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. Yeah. Um, you're driven by your ability to help others. Like, there's no yeah. doubt about that. Um, but how has that shaped you when you approach particular opportunities and knowing which opportunities are best for you and which ones are a distraction? Because if you're driven to help others, you're gonna to wanna to try to help everybody. But how do you how do you 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 know know which and discern? Um, yeah, man, it for a very long time, Korea, I, I literally was just chasing any opportunity that can get me um that can get me exposure mm. but then that that in itself will literally run you down mm. if you're not intentional right and it was just recently over the pandemic when i said hey i want to slow down mm -hmm. i want to know exactly what it is that i i want to do mm -hmm. i want to know exactly what it is that i want to impact and how i want to impact mm -hmm. and um you know, quite frankly, it's a, it's a, it's always a revolving door that you're trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what's best for you? And that's the thing, right? And I think that's where people get stuck and they end up not doing anything at all mm -hmm. because they feel like they don't know beyond that fear. They don't beyond what, what's beyond that door, right. right? So when I'm, when I'm figuring out, okay, what opportunity is good for me? I'm, I'm thinking about who's the leadership mm -hmm. first and foremost, who is the leadership? Mm -hmm. um, what are the principles, right? Um, what are some of the developmental aspects within this particular role, true scope? Right. And before I walk into any dynamic, I always have that real talk with the boss and say, yo, what's your leadership style, right? Because I'm, y'all, I'm a very, <laughs> I'm very outgoing, I'm very direct, mm. and I don't really like the fluff, right? And, and I'm still trying to tailor, you know, the, the code switching and stuff like that. But I, I figured that my, when I deliver my best self and my genuine self, the product, right? The, 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 the production of the work ends up better. Yeah. When I'm not trying to, you know, bump shoulders with the, with, with, uh, X, Y, and Z, it, just, it don't make sense for me. You ain't just, out chasing basically. Yeah. It just don't <laughs> Um, so when I feel like I can be my little, my genuine, my genuine, say the word for me. Genuine, genuine. Genuine self. Um, <laughs> I can, I can really, uh, I feel like I can better serve. Right. And, that, and you nailed it. You know, my, my whole thing is how can I serve someone? And I know that's so cliche these days. People mm -hmm. are like, oh, I want to serve. I want to serve. Right. No, literally like I, the paycheck can come very secondary. Yeah. If I, if I have the autonomy to give back in a way mm -hmm. that is uh, systematic and in, in, in changing and things of that nature. Right. Right. Um, and even furthermore, going on that, yeah, like you're very aware of the path that you're going, right? Um, and what you want. Um, who laid that foundation for you, though? Like, where did that? Where <laughs> did that come? Oh man, my at a very very young age mm -hmm. at a very very young age um, i was born into a military family mm -hmm. um i'm an outside looking in i have a uh american dream family right <laughs> i'm outside looking in um, my father served in the military for 32 years my mom was a stay-home mom for about 15 years 
Mm -hmm. um, you know, got the, got the cute dog, yeah. older brother. He's, he's successful in his career. Um, however, everyone has a story, right? Yeah. Everyone has a story. Mm -hmm. And my father, he grew up a small town in Monk's Corner, uh, South Carolina. And he always told a story. I'm a daddy's girl at heart. Okay. Um, so I would literally, you know, just sit in his man cave and just, just listen to the stories that he would tell us about, you know, him having to go to an outhouse to use the bathroom, him having to, um, you know, boil water just to drink the water and just like just so many different life skills that he would tell us and just growing up every year, every year. Um, we would we would feed the homeless. I remember when I was like four or five, like at a very young age, we would go feed the homeless and we would, um, you know, just try to give back. And, and at a young age, you don't really know what you're doing because you, you don't know what you're thinking because you're, you're like, hey, I'm five years old. I want these toys for myself, right? right. Um, but he, he always told us, and this always rings a bell in my, my ear, is like, it can always be worse. Right. You know, you, you're in a place, Veron, where you're you're very privileged, but it can always be worse. And every time, you know, I get into a funk, I literally channel that energy of what he's telling me, my father, and, and right. saying, like, man, be you, your your best, your worst days is somebody's, you know, it could be it could be worse. It could right. just be a complete, complete shit show. So, um, you know, those, those foundational things and, and humanity comes from my father, for sure. Okay. Um, that's so good. And, um, I know that has, um, basically incorporated, incorporated, um, your current values and even how you see the world. Um, my next question is you do have a natural ability to connect with others, right? Um, mm. when people meet V, I feel like they, they just fall in love with you, right? Ow! <laughs> Has, though, right? But there can be an opposite end on that. Sure. So has it ever caused, like, where you're like, okay, this is how I am, but, uh, like, you were boundaries? Like, how do you, how do you, because if, if you go into a situation or people in environments where people are naturally attracted, right, to you and your personality, how do you incorporate particular boundaries in, between um, business and casual, like what does that look like? Ooh, that's a fantastic question. There's so many. There's so many times where you know, outside of my profession, when I'm when I'm just hanging with my friends, and they be like, "Girl, you flirting with da 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 with whoever?" Huh? I'm literally just being friendly. I'm just being me, right? And right. It, it, it honestly, Korea, and I don't think I've ever really told anybody this, but. It, it stems from that little girl mm. that was always an outsider that was like always looked as the tomboy mm. and was always that person who felt like she didn't stand within the bubble of people mm. and just trying to find her way. Mm -hmm. And just going through school, I've seen so many girls that were like that mm -hmm. and they would fall through the cracks and they would take their tray and they would go to the bathroom to eat. And wow. they would, you know, like, I, I remember those types of, uh, of things. And I, I always said, man, I don't want to ever, I felt like that before. Mm -hmm. And I never want somebody else to feel like that. So when I lead through a conversation, I lead up, okay, well, how is this person going to feel when they interact with me? Mm. You know, so that's the number one. So when you conversate, you conversate from a place of service. I, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I conversate of a place of service and I conversate in a, in a place of, I genuinely want to get to know you. I want to know, because sometimes right. people, you know, sometimes people uh, talk to folks and they're not, and I'm, I could be a, I could sometimes do this too. I might be going to hold you. Like I'll ask questions. Okay. People think that I'm not like paying attention, but I really am. Right. I'm really, because some people are like, dang, that was an invasive question to be like, why are you asking them that? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I want to know. And then at the end of the day, people be like, yo, no one actually sat down and just wanted to talk to me that way. Wow. You know? Mm -hmm. So now it's like a release on both ends. I'm getting my feed because I'm, I'm uh, 
um, I'm getting to know somebody, I'm learning right. new things. Right. And then you see, because it's like now they're being seen. Mm. The attention is being on them, right? Mm. So, um, yeah. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, you did. You did. That was, and that was a great, a great, um, I didn't know that. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning just as well as y'all learning. Okay. <laughs> Get into it, baby. <laughs> now you do strive over stability. Like you yes. like consistency and stability. Um, tell the people it's okay to live your dreams and still be employable. Y'all, don't <laughs> let the internet, no, real talk, yo, don't let the internet try to tell you that you, this entrepreneurial game is, is strictly for you and da, 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 da. And when she says stability, I like to know, I don't like to know that I potentially not be able to pay my bills. I don't like that feeling. Right. I, that feeling is a not a good feeling for me. Mm. And, you know, that rush is not a good rush for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> If y'all entrepreneurs love that ramen noodles, sleeping on somebody's couch, and I'm gonna be honest, I've I've done that for six months. Right. You know, I've slept on somebody's couch. I know what that feels like. Right. Um, and, and penny pinching and stuff. Uh -uh. Um, but I need y'all to understand like, the terminology that I just used, which was the yeah, that entrepreneur, right? Um, that individual where you can come into it space that's already stable running and, and, and has its its pillars and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. If you come in and you shake that shit up and you make it your own and you become the entrepreneur in that space, right? So I guess it's for it's different strokes for different folks. Uh, you know, when you understand one, I I say within the last eight months I realized those oh, social media not gonna run me, right? The mm -hmm. the images that I see is not going to run how fast I'm going to do something. Wow. I'm going to do something. Are you somebody it's, today. It's not because look, you get, you will literally run yourself into a rabbit hole trying to figure out what the Joneses are doing. Listen, and the, and the Joneses part, ain't showing you everything. And not even that, that they're showing you everything. They really don't care. <laughs> they don't care. The people really, if you don't post or you do post right this is all the way 10 stacks the world will still run Facts. Facts. it will still run so um you know I'm, I'm in a i'm in a space now where now even aesthetically if i post something it it, it doesn't have to be all the glips and glamour super sharp and da, da, da. no if you y'all gonna get this content whatever content that look like if it's ass you're gonna get this content it's gonna be purposeful but you're going to get this content. <laughs> so, you know, when it comes to just the body, y'all, man, it's about really understanding you mm. and being okay with you and how you operate. You right. know what I'm saying? So, and that's when you're going to really see, you know, just results and traction and stuff like that. I love it. I, 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 I so love that. And you're literally leading into my next question because how do you feel about um, social norms of like of today when it influencer versus like impact? Right, because we have, uh, let me kind of go more in depth in your question. So we have people who carry a certain level of influence, right, but um, may not necessarily impact in the way of, of transformation. Sure. Right. Um, um, so what, what is your take on that or someone who may be thinking that they really want to do impact, but they're trying to lead down the road of influence? What are you? Um, how can you help them in regards to maybe navigating or giving them um, words of encouragement, maybe sure. um, of saying, if this is really what you are about or this is really what you want to do, this sure. is what you need to lead with this versus this. Sure. So we have to understand, and I think it's all about perspective. All of this, when you think of impact, is mm -hmm. truly about perspective. Mm -hmm. um, the who am I to say that a comedian on social media doesn't have impact, right? Right. His, his soul and his or her soul's mm -hmm. impact could be, hey, I'm I want to give people laughter, and my impact is to ensure that they don't have a a Debbie Downer day. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is provide content that is going to uplift them, give them positivity. Therefore, it's going to drive their day, right? right? So absolutely, to me, that's the impact in itself, right? So it all depends on how and what your your mission is mm. and, and i think people get so turned up of like 
just because you're not, you know, picking up trash or you're not feeding the homeless or you're not, um, you know, building out a park or you're not doing those, those, you know, philanthropy, the philanthropy, um, you know, big ticket thing mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're not impacting people and community. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where um, I think just the perspective lies. So when, when, you, when I'm saying, hey, um, you know, what does that look like for, you know, someone who's trying to get within this business? One, understand, try to figure out, is this even, are you doing it for clout? Are you doing it to try to mm -hmm. be, you know, seen or cool? Um, and that's, that's also something that, you know, I think I learned from you, Korea, uh, was like, yo, I always told myself, man, I don't want to even post on social media what I'm doing. I don't want to post on social media when I'm giving back to the community. Cause I, one, I, I thought that was corny. Like if you're giving back, you're supposed to give back on the kindness of your heart and that's it. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was talking to you and Danielle, my name drop. Hey, Danielle. Um, I was talking to you two and y'all like, well, the more people see you doing the activity, the more they want to get involved and try to figure out how can they help. Yeah. And if I'm thinking about big picture, systematic change, you right. have to move with an army. Absolutely. There's no way you can, you can go by yourself. So uh, when it comes to just the resources people want to come in, I'm, I tell you, listen, Korea, I, I bullshit you not. I, I had a, an incident where I got a thousand dollars took from my account. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't even blink an eye, didn't care about it. I right. knew I had a, a initiative that was going on the very next week. It was mm -hmm. thriving. I, I literally get a high when I think like an initiative that's helping other people are, are right. thriving, right? Okay. And like the very like right before we was about to take the stuff to the the um the school district, the I, the food items to the school district. Uh -huh. I get so many people in my DMs like, yo, I want to help with the initiative. I want to help with the initiative. Like, what's your cash app? What's your cash app? Wow. And I'm just like, I didn't even, I did not. And you look, you know my, you see my, right. I did not ask people for anything. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. But because they seen that I'm passionate about this mm -hmm. and that I'm, 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 I'm moving forward with this with, with right. great intention. It, it just inclined people to want to help you. Mm. And I'm just like, oh, wow. If I would never even, you know, post these types of things, people would never know and they would never want to help. So right. now when it's time for that, 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 that particular project that's going to need the community to help and right. help, um, they're going to be more inclined to give. And that's what it's about, right? right. That's what it's motive. truly about. So at the end of the day, it's just motive. No, no matter where you are, where you stand and what you want to do, it's really just digging down into what are your motives in your industry and in your lane. Yeah, yep. how, how you can be impactful in your lane. If you're a digital marketer or if you're a, a, a um, you know, a financial coach, maybe do a, do a lesson for free, right? Everything is not about the, the, the ticket, you know, the, the, the price, right. you know, maybe go into your, your community and say, Hey, I'm gonna put on this program for, for students or kids that, that particularly won't get the opportunity to do this stuff. Right. That's showing impact right there. Exactly. You know, use utilizing what you're already gifted at and give that gift right back. Yeah. So beautiful, beautiful. Active listening for you um is is a gift. <laughs> um how would someone who is not great in this become better? And why would they need to focus on this skill? Because I because I, even if we talk about we can dig deep on other skills as well. But like in regards to like this particular skill, why and how even has this skill served you? Wow. Um, active listening. Um, I still think I can tune up some some things. Um, I literally, my mind races at a thousand miles per hour, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes and I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Korea's giving me a lot of grace right now. I'm saying I got some good active listening skills. She does have good active listening <laughs> skills. The test showed it. <laughs> um, but I can literally be, I can literally be, and this is this is me being transparent, transparent with you all. Um, I could be literally sitting in a meeting. We're having a meeting, but I'm thinking about, okay, at 10, 12, and 11, I need to do X, Y, and Z. 
ultimately that's not active listening if i'm not completely there right focused right. on the hand at that very moment yes however one thing that i've learned when i'm when just when it comes to active listening um it's truly about putting the devices down right Okay. And looking someone in the eyes, mm. looking someone in the eyes and, and, and just channeling on what they're saying mm -hmm. and not channeling in on what they're saying so that you can reply, but channeling saying, okay, I'm just going to empty my brain. I'm going to try to empty my brain right. and, and um, really just focus in on what they're saying. Um, again, y'all, it's still a, a, a process for me for sure but when i do interviews and i love to do interviews as well um and, and ask questions and things of that nature um one is it's coming from it so if, if i'm listening i'm listening from a genuine place therefore i'm invested in the conversation mm -hmm. and once i'm invested into the conversation there you can see where my mind is opening up on how okay how can i better engage this interaction between the two which goes back to the last you know question a couple questions you you asked of just like well how do you connect mm. you know so how do you connect with someone it's always leading up just like like what's the feeling of the conversation yeah. how does this person feel so yeah do you feel like that is a skill that people will need to have um in regards to just growing right yeah absolutely pete individuals i'm gonna be honest they don't do business with businesses they do business with good people mm. so it's imperative for people to have those interpersonal skills mm. um that they can connect with individuals and understand like there's you know there's actually a certain boundary when you're talking to someone now i mean now they are on zoom but if you're talking with someone in person mm. like sometimes people don't even know how far and close to stand to someone those are all mm. intricate details on how you can make someone feel comfortable within okay. um you know just a conversation um but do i think that individuals need to learn that absolutely yeah. like just how to have a conversation with someone and how to bring up maybe things that, that are uh, confrontational but in a way that's respectable and okay. in a way that um doesn't bring tension but it brings a, a resolution right mm -hmm. so um it's and, and all those things it's about putting yourself out there and just doing it. You have to just do it, trial and error, right? There's been times where I've corresponded with my boss and I'm like, mm, I probably shouldn't have said it that way. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I go back and I try to, you know, uh, uh, you know, get my words together. And there's been times where my boss has said something that was a little off. And I'm like, whoa. Right. Yeah. Let me, let me figure out how to address this in a way. People are not going to let it just go. We're not gonna let it go by. <laughs> right. um, but those are all interpersonal skills where people, they were, I'm telling you, they respect you mm. when you can learn how to communicate yeah. in a way that is, um, that's receptive. That's receptive, right? Um, yeah. and, and that's across all boards, not just, you know, your profession, your um, career, but in your relationships. Mm. You know, how do you talk to your mother? How do you talk to your father? How do you talk right. to, how are you becoming a better sister, brother, whatever that looks like for you mm. in, in all aspects of your life. I try to, I try to put that in compass of everything, yeah. right? So I'm practicing everywhere I go, even when I'm going to the grocery store and how I interact with people right. there. I'm, I'm, you, I'm nurturing that skill. Fact. So, yeah. Um, as we're talking about skills, what are like maybe top two other skills that you feel like people are really missing um, right now? And if they had them, um, could really either take their career or business to the next level, or um, you feel like that can just help them overall and just encompass and just being a, their best selves. Sure. When you say skills, are you talking about um, like tangible skills like people that can do microsoft and you know word adobe or you're talking I'm about talking about more um personable skills so we can talk about like emotional intelligence we can talk about um i was gonna be one of them yeah yeah <laughs> along that along that line along those okay lines. um definitely emotional intelligence man i thought i know that this has been a a buzz um terminology within just you know 
corporate America and just people period. Right. Um, and we just tapped on that, just the interpersonal skills, those, those mm -hmm. core, core line with one another. Mm -hmm. um, so having emotional intelligence is probably number one for me. Mm -hmm. And then um, being curious, mm -hmm. being undeniably curious. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not gonna hold y'all up. I am nosy. If I, <laughs> I'm for real. As heck, she's nosy as heck. She be curious about stuff that don't need to be curious. <laughs> I'm nosy, but what? Look, when you get curious about your line of profession, mm. you literally soak up so much knowledge about the things that you thought you knew but had no idea about. Mm. Now you are being, you're nourishing that, that idea of an expert now. Wow. When you become undeniably curious because mm. now every answer has a question, you know, and then you can say every answer has a question. Therefore, there's still more to learn. And let's be honest, we will not, we'll never learn everything. Wow. So the answer still has a question behind it. How That's could you be? deeper yeah man just just go deeper into that thing and that's how you can be an expert into your field mm -hmm. and the third thing i would say yo you gotta have work ethic mm. you just have to have work ethic i'm gonna be honest i literally pride myself mm -hmm. of not being the smartest person in the room i'm really not that brilliant y'all <laughs> i'm not that brilliant um but i i just work hard i work extremely hard mm -hmm. If there's an initiative, like I'm the first one there. If there if there's something that needs to be done, the, the grunt work, I'm I'm volunteering to do it. If yeah. there's hell, if there's a trash can that needs to be uh replaced, I'm doing it. It's just the uh -huh. thing do be willing to do the things that people don't want to do. That also could be cliche because I you know I hear plenty of people doing yeah. it, but honestly, are you doing it? Right. Right? Are you are you willing to do that and sacrifice? Yeah. Um, to, to, to really do that. And that in itself for me has opened doors and opened and put me in rooms. I had no business in being in. Wow. No business being in. Wow. I didn't, I'm sitting in a boardroom. They're throwing out terminologies. I have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs> but because I'm, I look, one, I look like I'm supposed to be there and I okay. have intellectual, I have emotional, emotional intelligence. Yes. I am immersing myself in the atmosphere. Wow. Therefore, as they're saying these words, and I'm when I go back to the office, I'm Googling this stuff. Right. Because I'm nosy, right? Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's their root. Um, and then the next time we go into that that meeting, mm -hmm. now I, I can lead the conversation. Wow. I can put my input of what's going on, mm. you know, so it's, all, and then it goes back to, you have to listen first. Yeah. Understand what's going on first. And don't just think that you're an expert immediately when you go in. I'm telling y'all, I pride myself of not being the smartest in the room. I am not that brilliant. Right. Once I graduated from Georgetown University, shout out to your Hoyas. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I am not that smart, man. And I, I literally just have killer work ethic I'm, mm -hmm. I'm someone that you're not going to outbeat me period mm -hmm. so, yeah. period well then so we felt that confidence right so for someone who is not confident though and who really um mm -hmm. they may be smart right mm -hmm. um they may be one who who can actually go in a room and and give valuable com um, conversation or give valuable feedback um, even for yourself, I feel like that you, you don't give yourself enough credit to be honest with you, but we'll talk about that another time. Yeah, but, <laughs> but at the end of the day, like for that person who, who don't have that, that level of confidence, like what do, what do you, um, what do you say to them to help them build that? Or how did you even build your confidence to where you are right now? Y'all, I, <clears throat> I always knew. I was different, right? Mm -hmm. I always knew that I had a level of influence. Mm -hmm. I've had a level of um, tenacity. Mm -hmm. One is because I've seen my father, right? Mm -hmm. I've had I had the privilege of, of living with a strong black man mm -hmm. who didn't play about his kids, you right. know, and was invested, fully invested into his kids. And, you know, I never, you know, shout out to my mother now, we never had a, a great relationship 
Um, but now that I'm older, we had, we have one. Right. Um, but I, I never, I never had really like a woman show me the ropes. Right. My mother was very, she was very meek. She was very mild. She was very uh, timid within the relationship of my mother. I mean, my father and her. Yeah. Um, so I always knew I'm like, yo, I want to be like my dad when I grow up. Yeah. Watching him move with his soldiers and how he operated in different spaces. I knew I wanted to just, I wanted to be different. And, yeah. and you know, even, and I don't think I told you this neither, <clears throat> Korea, and this is going back to just ne never being the smartest in the room. Yeah. Like at, at high school, I was, I was about to graduate from high school. I'm reading at a fifth grade reading level. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it, I always knew that I wanted to speak I always knew I wanted to, to like in all the school plays and um, I wanted to be class president, which I was several years. And, um, and I never let my, just my, my, my downfalls be the, the reason why I didn't want to do those things. And I was very, I was always that girl that's like, yo, I hope this teacher does not pick on me to read because I can't get through these damn two sentences that she wants us to read. Right. Yeah. Um, so I was that girl, but I knew with just good practice mm -hmm. that it would work. Mm -hmm. And when I say I'm bring, I'm tying it all in with my father, mm -hmm. I would come home. I said, dad, yo, I want to be class president for da, da 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 He's like, okay, let's do this. He would literally get the camera, set mm -hmm. the camera up. Wow. He would just rehearse my speech over and over and over. Wow. And he would tell me like, okay, do this and do this with your voice, do that with your voice. And, and he literally was coaching me in real time. Wow. And I found myself remember, just remembering those moments of how I felt so prepared. Mm. Prepared for the moment. There's no one can step in your way. Oh, <laughs> like I gotta go see the video the way that she's looking right now. Okay, <laughs> there's nothing like being prepared. Mm. And again, when you're, when one, when you're decided and you're saying, "Hey, I'm going to do this." Mm. When I was decided and say, "Hey, I want to be, you know, class president or whatever that thing looked like," right? right throughout the years, I decided to do it, and then the the practice came involved, and then therefore, I, again, I. When I was decided, I still was kind of shaky, like, oh, I don't yeah. know if this is it. Yeah. Yeah. But then when the practice comes, I'm like, oh, I can do this. Mm. This does feel natural. Wow. I can be in these rooms, yeah. right? And then before you know it, the confidence starts to come in because when my pops would be like, oh, yeah, that was the one. That was, that the, was one. the one. That was you know, the one. so it, it, it just, it ignites a level of, of, um, tenacity to just do something you never knew you could do so for those individuals who are out there and they're thinking hey how can I be more confident in this space yeah practice mm -hmm. when I say pra I would before even to even to this day if I know that I'm going to be speaking I'm practicing in the shower wow. right I'm just practicing in the mirror yeah I'm, I'm practicing I literally will have the lights off uh -huh. or even the lights on it depends on how my mood okay off, right I know I'm weird like that <laughs> Give us a visual. I mean, you know, we can <laughs> me off like no, dead silence, and I'm talking in a room of just silence. But mm -hmm. I'm here. I'm hearing the echoes. I'm hearing me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, channeling. I'm hearing my voice. I'm just. Mm -hmm. I'm. I'm visualizing the the reaction of the crowd, of the mm -hmm. people, the mm -hmm. facial expressions. Mm -hmm. If they give me that facial expression, how am I going to elevate my voice? It's a science to this stuff, y'all. Right. Yeah, it's a science to this stuff. So. Um, you know, at the, at the root of it, mm -hmm. when you're more prepared, you feel like you can conquer anything. Wow. So get prepared. That's yeah. the key. Get prepared. That's going to be the name of the podcast. Get prepared. <laughs> hey, I, I love it. <laughs> get, prepared. The the get prepared. <laughs> All right. This is going to be the, um, one of the last questions. Um, um, what do you feel like one is the one thing that is kind of missing from our generation um, right now? Mm -hmm. Great question, and I wanna I wanna make sure I'm I'm hitting it. Um, one thing that we're missing from our generation. Mm -hmm. hmm. 
It's a great question, Korea. Um, at the heart of what you just release yeah. it. I think I think uh, J Cole said it best. Mm. J Cole said it best. He said, "Love yours." Mm. J Cole said it best. He said, "Love yours." And mm. um, what he was saying by that, you know, love yours, love your life, mm. love, you know, if you're in a relationship, love the person who you're with, love mm. your your family, love mm. your situation, even if the situation is not as good as you you want it to be, love it. Mm -hmm. Just just love it. Mm -hmm. um, we get so wrapped up in not, I hate utilizing social media in this, in this term, but we get right. in this rabbit hole of just wanting to be what the next person has and, and have what they have and, and understanding that there's always going to be somebody beautiful, you know, or better than you or more talented than you. Mm -hmm. and, and just, just love yours, love where you are at this very state. Mm -hmm. Um, not saying that you are complacent in it, mm -hmm. but you're you're understanding that it's a part of the process to get to where that next level is. In Korea, we had a conversation not too long ago, of just being patient and just understanding like this. It's 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 a part of where your your it's a part of the level where you're at. Because if you get it too fast, you'll lose it just as fast. Right. right? So we we have to understand to. <laughs> yeah. You, 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 we just have to understand like wherever it is that we're at, don't soak in it, but love it to the, to the aspect of how could, you know, I make this situation better for myself. However, how, how why am I in this situation now? And being, being very intentional and aware of the things that are around us mm -hmm. to understand like I'm exactly where I need to be at yeah. this exact moment. Yeah. I was, I'm actually reading this book um, by Brian Tracy and it's called No Excuses. And uh, I literally just left off, um, I literally just left off of it, of a page that says, the biggest way to like get to the next step is to say, I am responsible. Mm. That way you, you do not take on the negative negativity that could be of any particular situation or anything that happened just say i'm responsible and, and that takes away its power um and uh yeah so that's so good back of what off of what you were saying that's what it literally reminded me of that oh that's so good because when mm -hmm. you're responsible when you say yo i'm responsible you then you do everything in your power to figure out okay if i'm responsible how do i shift this how do right. i figure Wow, now your gears start to literally turn exactly. on how to get out that situation. So and, and you don't any and then it takes less focus off of everything outside of you. Wow. Yeah. Ooh, that's so good. <laughs> I'm not the Brian Tracy for that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I have to ask every guest this because obviously the name of the podcast is called Soul Food, Soul Food for um the aspiring, emerging um leader. And um, words of wisdom that just does something to your soul. But we got to talk about the food, though. I mean, it comes to soul food. Like, what is the meal? What what's what, what is it? Because you know I love to cook me. So, like, <laughs> y'all should be throwing down. <laughs> no, I love to cook. So, like, I mean, if it's a meal, what what we what what is your ideal? What does that look like? You want me <clears throat> to be all the way to sexual? My favorite cuisine is Mexican food. I can literally eat Mexican food every day of the week. Um, <clears throat> give me a good chimichanga, a little beans, a little rice, a little cuco <laughs> cacao. We good. Okay, we're in good business. Um, but when we're thinking of soul food, hey, you, you got to add a candy yam. You got to have a mac and cheese. You, know, okay. you got to have the greens. And look, yeah. I don't know about that the, the turkey leg y'all putting in the, It's the neck bone. Okay. It's the neck bone. <laughs> now, baby. We put the neck bone in there. Stop playing with the neck bone. <laughs> um, and some people do mashed potatoes, but you know, my I grew up on the rice. You know, put the yeah, put the rice on the uh the green. Oh, the rice. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I love me a, a good a good plate. A good yeah. plate. Yeah, like it's a good one. <laughs> All right, V, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for your time. Tell the people where they can find you. Yes, y'all. 
Korea. This has been a pleasure. I had so much fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, y'all, y'all can find me um, on all plat. Well, on Twitter, IG, uh, V the Truth. So that's V E E underscore the truth, not the truth. <laughs> the the, the truth. Um, also, visit my website, um, winisnow.co. Winisnow.co. Um, I'm happy to connect with each and every one of you. Um, let's figure out how we can impact the community. You know, how can I, um, you know, help you all, you all out of, of just figuring out, you know, how can we immerse you within your own communities and, and making the world a better place. So, Korea, thank you, my love. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we'll talk soon. Absolutely. Um, thank you guys for listening in. And I'll see you guys next week.